Hello, okay. Uh, we're back online, sorry about that. Uh, technical difficulty. Anyway, I'm just gonna start over with this whole thing. But uh, again, my name is Michael Davies. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Uh, I am the creator of Davies Media Design, obviously. And for today's live session, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you guys how to uh, do exposure bracketing. And like I was explaining before, exposure bracketing is uh, basically when you you know, go into your camera settings and you make it so that you take one photo that has minus two exposure, for example, another photo that has a zero exposure, and then a third photo that has like a plus two exposure. By doing that, you can capture the dynamic range of a natural, you know, scenery. So let's say in this case, we're going to be editing a uh, photo of a sunset. And when there's a sunset, there's a lot of light coming through the sky but then there's a different level of light for the clouds, and then there is a you know, different level of light for what's happening on the ground. So basically you have like three different levels of exposures, and it's hard to be able to capture all of that in one photo. So with this technique that I'm gonna be showing you guys today, you're gonna to be able to capture that whole range uh, using what's called exposure blending. And we're gonna be using a free plugin for this, and I'll show you guys where to get that in a second. And I was just ensuring that I could read your guys' comments because, um, I didn't have my dual monitor set up, and so I can't see both the live stream and uh, working GIMP at the same time. So I've got that issue sorted out now. So I'm seeing some of your comments, and I see that you guys are kind of helping to uh, answer some of the comments for me. So I definitely appreciate that. And I see a bonjour in uh, Michael, <laughs> which I'm guessing that the two dots above the E is uh, how you would spell my name in French. Um, Anyway, so if you guys have any questions about tutorials that you've watched this week or really any time on my channel, if you have any general GIMP questions, I'm going to try to get to those. Also, if you guys want to support our channel, the Super Chat feature is a great way to do that. I've been getting some uh, messages on Facebook and some other social media sites lately about how can I just support your channel with a one-time uh, donation versus something like a Patreon you know, monthly support, and I think the Super Chat feature is the best way to do that. So, um, yeah, feel free to use that Super Chat feature. But, of course, as usual, before we get started today, I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check this out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP 2.10 photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get some awesome GIMP extras in return. So definitely check those sites out, guys. I have the links in the description. And then the plugin I'm going to be using today is called Exposure Blend. And this is the uh, link where you can find that plugin. Unfortunately, the uh, GIMP uh, registry, plugin registry, no longer exists. So they're not keeping up with that anymore for some reason. I know that they are planning on going to a new system where it's kind of like Adobe where you have a creative community where you guys can upload your own stuff and you can download other people's you know GIMP plugins and features and things of that nature but they haven't finished that quite yet so for now um, what, what we have to do basically since there's no GIMP plugin registry is find plugins on the web through uh, amateur websites like this and I'm sorry for the dude who designed this website for calling it amateur but it's not the greatest looking website in the world and it looks like the most up-to-date version of this plugin he has is GIMP version 2.6. Let me scroll down. Yeah, so this one, it's not made specifically for GIMP 2.10, but I did install it, and I'm using it in my GIMP, which is GIMP 2.10. So it should be able to uh, work for you guys using GIMP 2.10. And basically what's going to happen is you're going to download this. It's going to download it as a script. And you're going to need to navigate to your scripts file, which you can go to GIMP and then share GIMP again, 2.0, and then scripts. And then drag and drop that .scm file in here. So this is that file that I downloaded. Of course, always make sure that you run your virus scanner before you, you know, open up this file or drag it into any files on your computer. So make sure this is a safe file before you download it with your uh, virus scanner. So that's just something I always recommend. And again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to use the chat feature. I see that we've got a pretty uh, decent amount of people watching the live stream now, so thanks for stopping by and watching. 
But without further ado, uh, you guys, I'm going to get into uh, how to actually perform this. Real quick, though, I just want to mention that this plugin, the one thing I have noticed about it is that sometimes when I run the plugin, it disables my ability to undo actions in GIMP, so my Control Z button or to go into my undo history right here and uh, undo any actions that I'm trying to perform. So just keep that in mind when you're using this plugin. If it does freeze up on you, just close down your GIMP and uh, reopen it, and that should get you back to uh, where you need to be. And also, by the way, make sure you close down GIMP after you um, download this plugin and add it into your scripts folder. And I'm seeing I'm getting a question right now. Um, there's not one in the gimmick plugins that I know of as of right now. Um, and yes, we are live, Michael Terry 1000. There might be a little bit of a delay between the comments and uh, me answering them. But um, yeah, as far as my research has showed me, I mean, there might be something in Gimmick to uh, do this exposure blending, but not something that I've seen yet. I'm sure if they catch on to this, uh, they might go ahead and add that feature to Gimmick. I know that that team works pretty hard and they're usually pretty up to date. Uh, I'm getting a comment about my audio being very bad. Uh, does anybody second that? If so, I can try to see if I can figure out a way to improve the audio here. Okay, is that better? That should be a lot better. Um, hopefully you guys can still hear what's going on. Uh, I just realized my microphone was kind of far away, so that would be why it sounded like it was far away. Uh, so a few technical difficulties on today's um, live stream. I guess this is just what you get for going live on YouTube. Anyway, thank you guys, Eric uh, Conseco, Ono, or Ono, sorry. Um, thank you guys for your comments. Omar, same to you. Okay, anyway. Um, getting through all this stuff, uh, Grat 2010, how you doing? Uh, I see your comments all the time on our channel, so thank you, and Rico's, uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, so getting through this, let's uh, open up our image here, or our images, and we're going to do that through using the plugin directly. So we're going to go to filters, and down here, after you install the plugin, the script, if you installed it correctly, it should be right in here. And by the way, I will show you guys after this briefly a way to manually do this if you don't want to download the plugin. But I'm just going to start with the plugin because I found it was a lot uh, quicker and a lot more efficient and just a lot better way of uh, performing this action. But anyway, you're going to go to exp uh, Exposure Blend and then click on that Blend icon there. And so this is going to bring up the Script Foo Blend box here. And so we've got three options. So we've got the Normal Exposure, the short exposure, which is going to be your dark image, and the long exposure, which will be your bright image. So real quick, I'm just going to open up my photos uh, folder where I have these photos. So these are the original right here. If you want to download uh, the scaled versions that I created earlier, you can do that via the link in the live stream. Um, I did put a link down there to, you'll see it says download the photos used in this tutorial and follow along. And it's going to be under the, the download section, and they're linked as light, dark, and normal. So that's going to be these three that are already uh, scaled down. But the ones I'm going to be using are directly from my camera. These are JPEG images, and they are not scaled down. So they're pretty large images, but I'm going to show you how to scale them down using the plugin. So let me just uh, minimize that, and I'm going to come over here. So I'll start with my normal exposure. So all this is saying as I uh, navigate over to the folder where this is located, is it's saying that um, it wants you to choose the normal exposure that you took with your camera. So that is going to be the exposure that was set to zero when you're doing your exposure bracketing. So right here I have those three images and the middle one was my normal one. And you could tell just because looking at the preview thumbnails here that this one's a little bit, it's in between, you know, in terms of the exposure level. So let me just click on that. And so now I've got that set as my normal exposure image. My next is going to be my short exposure, which is going to be my darker image. So I'm going to click on that. And this is going to make me navigate back to uh, where those files are. 
So I wanna go with my short exposure, which is my dark image, so that's this one right here. So I'll double click on that, and that is now set as my dark exposure. And I'm gonna come over here to my long exposure, which is my bright photo, and I'm going to navigate here, and I'm gonna to go to my GIMP photos again, live stream. So here is my uh, light exposure, my long exposure, or sorry, my, yeah, my long exposure. And I'm gonna click open. So now we have those three images set as our normal dark and bright exposures. And so we've got some preset options here. I'm just gonna leave these as is. This just has to do with, for example, here it says the blur type or edge protection. That is going to be, you know, how the edges of your layer masks are gonna be blurred. And I'm gonna come down here. There's one called Scale Largest Image Dimensions 2. And what this is going to do is it's going to take whatever the largest image dimension is. So in this case, it's gonna be the width of our images. And it's going to scale it down to whatever number we specify. So in my case, I wanna scale it down to 1920. So basically that means the widest this is gonna be is 1920. And then it's going to adjust the height based on the original aspect ratio of the image. And I'm just gonna click OK. And while that's running, I'm just gonna check back on your comments here. I see you guys are having a discussion. And I'm getting some questions about the icon theme on here. Real quick, I'm just gonna show you, if you go to edit, preferences, and you come down here under interface, you've got theme. So right now my theme is set to system. Uh, yours, Michael Terry, might be set to dark or gray or one of these. And then I've got one called icon theme right here. And I went to legacy and that's um, where I set, that's why my icons probably look different from yours. Legacy is just how the GIMP icons used to always look until they changed it. So this just updates your icons to reflect that legacy appearance that they used to have. Okay, um, so we've run that filter there, the long exposure filter. And so now what that's done is it's really just created a couple masks here and it's uh, turned the opacity of my bright exposure layer down. You'll notice it put my bright exposure layer first and then it put my dark exposure layer second and then below all that is my normal exposure layer, and it also labeled these based on their exposures and where they're located. And so now this has these two layer masks on here, and what this is doing is it's basically masking out most of the sky, not all of the sky, but most of the sky, keeping only the highlighted parts of the sky, and then it masked out the, the actual, uh, and by sky I meant clouds, and then it masked out the actual sky here a little bit, um, actually, I think it mostly masked this out. So um, the overexposed part of the sky is um, you know, now covered up, basically. And then it kept all of the stuff over here in the shadows, the uh, part of our theme park here that we wanna see more details of. Uh, it's not completely done yet. We're gonna fix this in a second. It's still pretty dark here, but it did brighten it up a little bit. And um, down here for our dark exposure photo, it really masked pretty much everything out except for the sky, so that's what it wants to keep here. And that's going to allow the sky to not look overexposed, and it's going to allow us to see some more details. And then it kept the normal exposure layer the same. All right, so once it's done that, what I wanna do is I want to duplicate this. And the reason I'm doing this is, again, I want to bring out more of the details from the bottom part here in my particular image. If I hold control, I'll zoom in with my mouse just a tiny bit there. And by the way, hopefully you guys checked out the shortcut keys tutorial that I put out this morning. So anyway, once you zoom in a little bit on your image, what I wanna do with this duplicated bright exposures layer is I'm just going to first come over here to my layer mask and I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm gonna switch the color over to black. So hit D on your keyboard and that'll change your colors to black and white, your foreground and background colors. Next, I'm going to increase the size of my brush, so I have a pretty large brush, and I'm just going to basically mask out the sky, and I actually do want to zoom out a little bit here. So I'm just going to start by painting out the sky because I don't want to just keep increasing the exposure for the sky. I only want to do this for the lower parts. 
And so the tough part here is you need to mask out just the top part. You don't want to mask out any of the bottom part. And you want to try to get everything uh, in the sky here. So I'm just painting black on this. So you'll see that that updates our layer mask so that only the bottom part of our image now has white on the layer mask. And remember, white creates opacity, black creates transparency, so anything painted black is going to be hidden by the layer mask. And once we've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back over here to my actual image layer. So I'm clicking off of the layer mask layer. And now I'm going to come over to Colors, Exposure, and I'm just going to increase the exposure, and I think I just did it by one. So I'll type in one here, and you'll see that when I do that, this bottom part will get a little bit brighter, and that's going to display a lot more of the details going on here. So you can see a lot more of the theme park and the stadium here, and I'll click OK. Something else I'm going to do with this layer is I'm just going to drag the opacity up a little bit, and you'll see that also reveals more details here. And let me just do it, turn it down a little bit just because I don't want it all the way up. So once we've done that, I'm going to hold Control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush again, and I'm going to turn the size of this down a little bit. And actually, I'm going to turn it down a lot. And I'm going to zoom in on this tower here, because when we painted the sky out using the layer mask, we painted this tower out, and it just makes it a little bit too dark, and it doesn't match the rest of what's going on with this theme park. So I'm going to hold control and zoom in a bit. And now I'm going to carefully, and actually let me switch over to white. So I hit X on my keyboard to switch to my white color as my foreground color. And now I'm just going to, and let me hit control Z, make sure I'm clicked on the layer mask and not on the main image. And I actually have to undo a couple things here. So let me go. And as I said, the um, this plugin can screw up your trying to, to undo anything. So let me real quick save this, Control S, and I'll just save this as Exposure Blending, and hit Enter. And I actually have to change this to XCF real quick. Hit Save. And actually, it's not going to matter if I, um, let me just, let me start over by uh, deleting that exposure and then save this and I'm going to close it and open it open it back up. So this is one thing, you know, I'm sure if they updated this plugin for GIMP 2.10 they wouldn't have this issue anymore, but uh, right now my undo has been disabled so I have to restart GIMP. So this is one of the wonders of going live, people. Um, you guys get to see all the nitty gritty sides of working in GIMP and making tutorials. If you guys have any questions, now would be a good time to ask, but I'm going to reopen that exposure blending image I was working on. Let me just duplicate that, and we're going to start over with uh, painting out the sky. I'm just going to do this as quickly as possible. So we'll paint out the sky here. So this will be a little bit more quick than the last time I did it. Try to make sure we get everything here. All right, and then we're going to come back over to our colors, exposure, increase this by one again, click OK, and then I'm going to increase the opacity of this layer a little bit, and now we're back to where we were. Okay, so now, this time, make sure you are clicked on the actual layer mask and not on the layer. Hold Control and zoom in. Grab your paintbrush, switch to white, turn down the size. And there we go. Hold control, zoom in a bit. And then now I'm going to paint the tower right here with white on my layer mask to reveal this tower. And you'll see as I do that, it's going to brighten up this tower. And then I can just use the brackets on my keyboard to adjust the size of my paintbrush as I paint. And I'm trying to not get any of these gaps here in between the metal of this tower. Just, oops. And I'll hit Control Z, and now you'll see my Control Z wants to work, which is great. Uh, but I'm just making sure I'm not painting anything outside the metal of the tower because it does create sort of glaring mistakes when you do that. All right, so. We've painted out that part of the tower. I'm going to scroll up a bit, paint out this main part of the tower. 
And there we go. Josh, welcome to the live stream. Um, if anybody wants to fill them in on the madness that's been going on with the live stream, feel free to do so. But we're just working on exposure blending here. And um, I've already used my exposure blend plugin. And now I'm just painting in some uh, highlights here using the brightness layer that I duplicated earlier. And so now I'm going to, uh, now that I've filled in uh, this part here using the layer mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use straight line mode to try to paint some more of the metal in here. So I'm holding, I'm clicking once here, holding shift and then clicking again. And you'll see that'll enter that in straight line mode. So that allows me to paint some of the metal in here. And I'm just going to decrease the size of my brush, do the same thing. So click here, hold control, or sorry, hold shift, and that'll allow me to paint in straight line mode. So I'm just clicking, holding shift, and then clicking again. So that's allowing us to paint in the metal of the towers here. So we can zoom out to see what this looks like so far. And if you paint too much of anything, you can always hit X to switch over to black and just paint any of the parts out that you don't want in here. So like this part right here. I'm not going to spend too much time on that just for the sake of time. But now I'm going to switch back over to white by hitting the X key on my keyboard. And then I'll increase the size of my brush for this one. Click in the middle and then hold shift and click to paint a straight line here. So, you know, the beauty of these structures is that they're usually straight or they should be. Um, and so I can easily just try to paint those. And you can see there I painted a little bit too much of what's going on in the background in the sky. So I'm just going to decrease my brush a little bit. Click on here, hold shift and click again. And same thing up top here. So that is revealing my structure here. And then if I really wanted to spend a lot of time on this, which I'm not for the sake of this tutorial, but I can come in through here and manually paint in each of these um, metal parts here of the structure. So again, I'm not gonna spend time on that right now. So you guys will see that um, glaring mistake there. So let me just undo it. But there we go. Now we've painted, painted in the tower. So the tower looks a little bit better. And now we've got our different exposure levels all brought in here. And by the way, real quick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my folder that has my exposure levels. And I'm just going to uh, right click, go to open with and choose GIMP. And this way you guys can see, and by the way, you always wanna convert this to the GIMP uh, sRGB native color space. But this way you guys can see what these exposures looked like before I performed anything, any actions on them. So I'll hit convert. And let me go to my final exposure here, open with, choose GIMP, hit convert. So this was the dark exposure photo I took. This was the normal exposure photo. So in both of these, you can see there's not really a ton going on here in terms of the exposure level of the theme park. You can't even tell there's a theme park going on there, but the sky looks pretty good here. And then here's the bright exposure level. So the theme park has a lot more details going on, but the sky is totally blown out. So when you combine all three of those together, you get this photo, which looks a lot better. So we're not done yet. We are going to now um, combine all of these onto a single layer. And we're going to do that by going to layer new from visible. And now that's going to put all of your visible layers here in your composition onto a single layer. So basically what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to make image adjustments to this like it would any other image, but it's going to also allow me to keep all of those previous exposure level layers. Uh, intact. So if I want to go back at any time and adjust these layers, I can do so. Uh, but now I'm going to shift click on the show hide icon, which is going to hide all of our other layers because we don't need them right now. And feel free to hit control S to save your progress. But now I can edit this as a normal photo. So for starters, I can go to colors, color balance, and I can just tweak the color balance of this photo. This part is going to be purely subjective. It'll be based on your guys' preferences and how you want to edit the photos, uh, how you want to edit your own photos. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this because the scene naturally had some yellow in it. This was a sunset, so it had a lot of orange and yellow colors going on. You can also add some red to the shadows here if you want to enhance 
uh, some of those reds and oranges and yellows that happen during the sunset. And I'll just add a little bit of magenta as well. Test out some blue there. See what it looks like with some yellows. So here's a before so far, here's an after. And then I'll go to my highlights. And again, just sort of move this back and forth. I'm gonna add some cyan to this for the highlights because the sky back here is really our highlights and uh, the sky obviously is blue. We don't wanna overdo it because you'll see that looks like garbage. So let me just add a little bit of red back into that. So there you go. And I'll just continue to tweak this. So I'm actually gonna keep this set to zero because I don't think it really adds anything. And then we'll see what the blue looks like here. So if you add yellow, it'll kind of match the sky to the rest of the image. If you add blue, it'll help some of that blue stand out a little bit better. So that's really a matter of personal preference. But there's a before, there's an after. So I'll click OK. And Omar, I see that you said you're going to be reviewing this again. I will definitely have uh, this video archived when it's done, which means it'll be thrown up on the channel and you guys can watch it at any time. Um, Hopefully you guys can skip over the technical difficulties parts. Uh, but anyway, moving on, now we're going to come over here to colors. And if you want, you can adjust your color temperature if you wanted this to be warmer. Um, I think in this case it's warm enough, so I don't really need to do anything to that. So I'm just gonna hit cancel. But now I'm going to go to colors and hue saturation, and I'm gonna turn the saturation up a little bit, which will enhance the colors of this image. So you can see as I do that, those colors are really starting to stand out. But as per usual, everything in moderation here, if you crank it too far up, it looks really artificial. I mean, some people are into that look, but I'm going to turn it down a bit. So there's a before, there's an after. So I'll click okay. And next I'm going to go to colors and I'm gonna come down here to levels. So I'm just going to adjust the levels a little bit and this is going to be part of my adding contrast to this image, but also just playing around with the uh, different levels for the shadows, highlights, and midtones. And so for this, I'm just gonna really create a subtle effect here. I don't wanna overdo it. I'll click OK. And now I'll go to Colors, Curves, and this is going to finalize adding contrast here. So for this one, I'm gonna bring my shadows, my darkest shadows down, so that's why I created a point way down here on my curve. And then for this one, I'm gonna do more so towards the center here and just turn the highlights up a bit. Again, not gonna overdo it. So here's a before, here's an after. So we added a little bit of contrast there and I'll click okay. And the last thing I'll do here is I'm going to add a vignette and we're getting close to the end here, so if you guys have any other questions before I go, feel free to ask now before we sign off. But the last thing I'm gonna do is add a vignette so you guys can add this on its own layer, which is what I usually do. So I'll just create a new layer, name it vignette, and fill this with transparency and click OK. And now I'm going to go to filters, light and shadow, vignette. I'll turn the radius up a little bit so that the corners um, aren't being too enveloped by this vignette here. And then I'll adjust the softness as well. And I'll click OK. And there's our final image there. So this is what, uh, this is the after obviously. Here's a before, so we had the one, two, and three different exposure levels. So we've combined all those into this one to create the final photo. And uh, actually, let me go real quick, filters, enhance, and I'll go to sharpen, unsharp mask, and this will sharpen it up a little bit. Because this was a pretty dark photo, uh, there's a little bit of noise going on here. I'm not gonna denoise it, but uh, you guys might be using an exposure blend with a photo that's not quite as dark, so there might not be as much noise. And thank you, Omar, I'm glad you liked the final result. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. And uh, thank you, Anno, I hope I'm saying your name right, but uh, thank you for the comment. And I'm glad you liked the tutorials that, that I've been putting out. Um, definitely putting a lot of work into those so you guys can learn GIMP and really enjoy GIMP the way I do. And I appreciate you buying the course. Thank you very much for doing that. That's another great way to support 
our channel while also uh, being able to learn a little bit more about GIMP. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching this. Actually, let me export this real quick. So I'll go to File, Export As, and I'll just save this as a JPEG. And you can also come down here to select File Type by Extension, but I'll hit Export. I'll crank this up to 100, hit Export again, and there we go. So thanks for watching, guys. Again, feel free to check out my channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And you'll get some awesome GIMP extras in return. So thank you guys again for supporting the channel, for watching, and for participating in these live tutorials. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.